Hi guys, I'm going to go over this video with you so you can take down notes in your packet. The interior of Alaska is cold in the winter, and so is the air. Florida is hot near the ocean, and you will find warm, wet air in Florida. Arizona is hot and dry, and so is the air. Welcome to Moo Moo Math and Science and Air Masses. An air mass is the large mass of air in which temperature and humidity are the same throughout. So go ahead and let me go back to this so you can see it better. This is what you're filling in in the blanks. An air mass is a large mass of air in which temperature and humidity are the same throughout. Either type this out or write it out in your packet. Go ahead and pause the video and then unpause when you are done are the same throughout. For example, the air mass over Alaska is cold and dry, and the air mass over Florida will be warm and moist. For an air mass to form, the air must stay over the area long enough to pick up the characteristics of the area. Most air masses will form over cold areas called polar regions, or warm tropical areas. In addition, you will find air masses that form over oceans and will be very moist. So think about what he says, an air mass that forms over oceans is moist. Why do you think that? Okay, it's obviously because it is the ocean. When it evaporates, it creates um, water vapor. So that's moisture within the air. Air masses that form over the ocean are called maritime. Air masses that form over land and continents are dry, and they are called continental air mass. So I'm going to go back, um, and you can rewind this if you want. So maritime form over water. Let me go back so you can see that a little better. Maritime air masses form over water, maritime. You can think of M-A-R-I as marine. So marine life is in the ocean, if that helps you. And then continental air masses form over dry land. Continental, you think of a continent, of a piece of land, and it is dry. So go ahead and write these down. And then once you completed that, press play. Continental air masses. Remember, an air mass is a large mass of air in which temperature and humidity are the same throughout. Let's take a look at many of the air masses found on Earth. Ameri okay, so go ahead and um, analyze these. See how they have these abbreviations here at the bottom. You see MT, ME. Uh, the only ones that I want you to really focus on are the peak, which is the maritime tropical, MT. The green, maritime polar, MP. The orange, continental tropical, CT. And the continental polar, which is CP. And we will review continental Arctic uh, as CA. We're going to use CA instead of CAA. Okay. Maritime equatorial, um, it's the more simpler one to understand. It's right on the equator, and that's the only portion where it forms. So go ahead and write down any information that you need from here. Maritime tropical air mass will be warm and moist. Okay. Tropical air mass, warm and moist. So that's what you need to write down. Warm and moist. Moist because there is humid humidity content, like moisture content in the air. Warm, think of the word tropical. You know, think of GR, Puerto Rico, Cuba, warm, Mexico, warm, around these areas. And on this diagram, they are pink in color. Maritime equatorial are hot and moist and are found at the equator. And on this diagram, they are purple. A maritime polar air mass will be cold and moist. Okay, so maritime, whenever one air mass is maritime, it will always be moist because it forms over the oceans, over water. Whenever you see an air mass have the word polar in it, you can think of the North Pole, 
which we know is very cold. So it will be cold and maritime is moist. Use context clues. And they form over the northern Atlantic and the northern Pacific Oceans. On this diagram, they're colored green. Continental tropical air masses are warm and dry. And they it's continental tropical, lowercase c, capital T. Uh, with continental, it's formed over a land, so it's dry. And tropical, it is warm, as I stated before, warmer area. They are colored orange and are found above and below the equator where it is hot and cold. A continental polar air mass will be cold and dry. Continental will always be dry. Polar will always be cold. You can think of the first portion of an air mass, like the first name of an air mass, as whether it is dry or moist. And the second, the second um, portion of an air mass, you can think of it as cold or warm. So how it feels, cold or warm. First will always be dry or moist. Second will always be cold or warm. And on this diagram, they're dark blue. And a continental Arctic and Antarctica are very cold and dry and they are like so we won't really go over these. Um, we will go over continental Arctic. Arctic is at the uh, Northern Hemisphere and then Antarctic, right? Because it's the opposite, A-N, is in the Southern Hemisphere. So it just differentiates with the different abbreviation of C, capital A, capital A. Light blue, and they are located very far to the North and South. Okay, so something they have to notice, I know it faded out a bit, is that look at the locations of these air masses. We already know the equatorial or equatorial, like he says, uh, is in the midline where the equator is. Antarctic and Arctic are at the poles. So this is the top, the bottom, north and south poles. The maritime polar are usually closer to the poles. So as you can see here, the polar is closer to the North Pole, polar closer to the South Pole, and even continental polars, they are closer to the poles. There's not much land down here, uh, so that, that's why there's not a lot of continental polar down here. For when we think of things that are tropical, they're usually closer to the equator. Do you see how these are directly next to the equator and they are tropical? The equator gets direct sunlight. So if you live in, like in these areas close to the equator, like for example, I used to live really South Texas, close to Mexico. It was always hot there, it, like never snowed because we were so close to the equator, we got that direct sunlight. I know that you used to talk about this in fifth grade. Remember maritime air masses form over water and continental air masses form over land. When an air mass moves over a region of the earth, the area's temperature and humidity may change along with the weather. So what causes the air mass to move? Global winds and jet streams help move these air masses. So we don't go over global winds and jet streams. Um, wind is due to unequal heating of the earth's surface as the earth rotates uh, and depending on the direct sunlight that that we get that's the cause of winds because it causes the air pressure to change um, it's the same thing in the water rather than on land so in the water there are things called jet streams so it's kind of like wind underwater if you watched finding nemo when they were little turtles like going into that into that jet stream you're like hey go ahead and follow this this uh, little loop, it'll take you right right there because that's like a wind gush underwater. Cold air masses tend to move towards the equator and warm air masses tend to move towards the poles. The Coriolis effect also contributes to the movement. In the United States, many air masses will move towards the northeast due to the Coriolis effect. Thanks for watching and moving all right so that's all making sure that you get all of these notes that were listed here um if you are done then that's amazing but if not then you're gonna have to go back and watch it again
So, yeah, that's it.